How's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. Now I know that it's been a while that I posted a video because I've been busy with life, family, work, and kids. And you know, this is just like a lot of things going on. So I haven't been posting because I didn't get the time or I didn't have a chance to uh, record any videos. So for this video, I'm going to do a uh, two years review on my 6th gen Celica with the uh, 4th gen 3S GTE swap. So it all started back in 2019 when I went to a Celica meet down in Fresno and uh, there's actually two 6th gen Celica that came. Uh, one had a 3rd uh, gen 3S GTE and the other half a 4th gen 3S GTE. I came back home, you know, do some research and uh, find out that many uh, owners have done the uh, 3S GTE swap, especially with the 4th gen because it's more common. And then nine months later, I decided to pull the string. I found the uh, motor on eBay or online i forgot what the website were i forgot where i found the motor but then uh, th that day i called the angelian warehouse down in la spoke to the owner he even showed me some photos of the compression test that he was doing and after everything checks out i bought the motor that very same day and like three days later um i received the um the, the engine they shipped it straight to my residence and when i received the motor i um you know tear down the motor and you know start prepping for the swap these section silica here and they, they look really nice but the FISFA motor is just really slow so go with the 3 SGTE motor it's a huge upgrade uh, you will spend a good amount of money on it but then you know it's really well worth it at the end this is my 4th gen 3 SGTE swap it's on my 96 Toyota Celica GT uh, swap out the FISFA with this motor here I prefer this motor because uh, it has coil packs, it doesn't have the uh, distributor and all that. So far during the swap, everything is pretty straightforward. Uh, most of the parts is bolt on. During the swap, after the motor is dropping to the car and got the, the engine running and all that, um, the uh, intake is actually one of the things that I ran into uh, a little bit of problems. Trying to reroute it because I didn't have enough space, the battery was too big so I ended up getting a Honda battery so it gave me a little bit more space to work with I was able to route the intake here toward that way a uh, little bit and you know away from the the heat the turbo and the, the manifold and all that to uh, prevent um, sucking hot air into the engine and uh, at the same time when I was removing my fast feed um, that the hoses that is uh, transferring coolants into the, uh, the the heater core um, when I was trying to take off the hoses I may have damaged the uh, the heater core hoses inside the cabin so uh, after a few uh, crews around with my friends I realized that the uh, coolant was leaking inside the cabin because it started to smell and fog up my car and yes yeah, so I uh, I did a bypass if you can see here I did a bypass right there with the uh, with the uh, this yellow elbow adapter here I did a bypass right there to prevent uh, coolant from leaking into my cabin after I clean up the, the whole car I had to remove the carpet and all that to clean up uh, any residue coolants or any coolant that is you now sitting in there and the next thing is installing this Mishimoto uh, radiator is a lot bigger and thicker so it's actually uh, pushing this fan here a little bit backward toward the, the, the turbo so um the turbo is hitting the the fan where i had to grind some of these plastic here off to clear the turbo or you guys can go with the market fan where it's thinner so you guys could avoid you know cutting any of the oem fan out like i did and the next thing is this dump pipe right here and the oem pipe does not fit this dump pipe because the dump pipe is three inch thick and i believe the oem was like two inch or 2.5 but either way, it does not align. So you'll have to take the car to a shop and have them get that fixed for you. And this uh, throttle cable bracket right here, um, I have to get that custom made too because um, the uh, OEM throttle cable was too long. So it had like a lot of play. I had, I had this throttle cable here zip tie down to this sensor here for a while. I had to uh, get a uh, customized bracket for that to be able to get this uh, throttle here to uh, sit properly so it doesn't have any play. And going to the front mount intercooler kit, I bought these online and I had a shop uh, trying to make it fit for me. Um, I believe you can use the Edo 8 front mount intercooler kit as well. Uh, Mainly has confirmed that it does fit and it, it works just fine. Um, as for the intercooler piping, 
is 2.5 all around except this piece right here this is two inches and the most tight space of all is actually this side here as you can see it barely fits uh, it's not touching but yeah um, you guys want to uh, keep your AC compressor and all that and this is just what you have to do to make it fit uh, unless you had your AC compressor deleted and yeah you probably get more space too that for me I want to keep my AC so I can drive this during the summer if I needed to by round the pipe to the inner cooler um, if you have the GT4 front bumper here you'll have to trim off some of the plastic behind the fog light I had to trim that off right here and a little bit up here and a little bit back here as well just to clear the the couplers or clear the, the pipes that's going to the inner cooler same with the uh, driver's side as well these plastic here has to be trimmed down too same with the other side as well to uh, be able to clear the the piping you want the couplers that's going to the inner cooler so i own this car about 10 years now and i've been running the uh, ford gen through hte for almost two years now uh, so far the engine runs pretty strong uh, it doesn't give me any hiccups or any issues so far there was a minor coolant leaks from one of the pipes but i was i was able to figure that out and you know got that fixed the other thing is that you know when i drive my car for about like you know 15 to 30 minutes and if i come to like a stop i turn off the engine for less than five minutes and i try to crank the car and the car will not start so when the engine is really hot and when i try to crank the car the engine will not start i have to let it rest for like maybe five minutes to ten minutes uh, minimum five minutes to be able to start the car and the car will turn on so I've been still having that issue ever since I dropped the motor onto my car and drove it. That's when I figured out that, you know, it's been, it's been doing that. But then so far it hasn't caused any issue, but then I really like to get that fixed. If you guys have any similar issue when you turn off your engine and, you know, it's hot and you try to crank it back up and the engine want to turn on. If you guys have some similar issue, please comment them below and let me know. I would like to get that fixed because sometimes it does get annoying. Alright, with that said, I'm going to go ahead and answer some of the questions that people have been asking me about my car. The first question is about the fog light. How do I keep the fog light with this bumper here? So when you purchase your GT4 front clip or the front bumper, you want to make sure that it comes with the GT4 OEM crash bar because it has the holes where you can bolt out the bracket for your fog light. And once you get that, then it should just you know fit perfectly with your bumper on it. The second question is about my TRD spoiler. How do I mount that on? I'm going to show that to you. So if you have the 94 and 95 Celica and then um, the TRD spoiler should bolt right up. One hole right here and one hole over here for the 94 and 95. So the TRD spoiler should bolt right up. But then you have the 96 to 99 Toyota Celica and then spoiler only come this far so it's missing this hole over here. So when you install the TRD spoiler, you will have to drill like an extra hole over here on your trunk. If you have the 96 to 99 Toyota Celica trunk. Alright, so that's gonna be it for my video. It's just a short video regarding my review on my 6th gen Celica that I've been owning with the 3 uh, SGT swap for almost two years. There is more plans that I wanted to do to my car, but then it has been happening like really slow. But once I get those going, I will definitely update you guys on YouTube. Thank you for watching. As always, you guys have a nice day.